in my mind, video games, porn, and sugar are kind of the three core categories of these things that we all want, right? You want to be accomplishing something, you want a beautiful person in your life, you want to eat delicious things. And all these things are synthetic ways to go get that. You play a video game, you've conquered the world, but you're on a computer eating Cheetos, right? Like you didn't do anything, it's you're a loser. All throughout all of our your experience, especially in the, you know, in the West generally, you're just like pummeled by synthetic dopamine experiences. And if you're not really disciplined about saying, I'm not gonna accept that, I'm not going to allow that to cloud my my existence, really, you're gonna be folded. Welcome to the Hard Way Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Races. We're teaching you how to overcome your obstacles in your life the same way we teach our 10 million plus Spartans to overcome obstacles on the course. With insight from the smartest, most accomplished experts from every corner of the world. Get ready to elevate your life today. Joe DeSena here, CEO and founder of Spartan and host of the Hard Way Podcast. I got Seth Goldstein, a buddy of mine who's been feeding me chips. That's right, I've been eating some chips thanks to this crazy person. But recovering financier, yep. right? So I, I, was, I was on Wall Street for about 15 years. So you and I speak somewhat of the same language. But what was most intriguing, the reason I wanted to sit down with you, was here we were running around a Spartan race and I heard you say a few things about taking the hard way and discipline. And I did not expect that to come from a financier. <laughs> no, I, I hear that. Um, I, I think a lot of finance is figuring out the best way to get to where you want to go, right? It, it's understanding what are the key drivers in any complex system you interact with. But um, in order to be able to do that, you have to really train your mind and understand how to search through that stuff correctly, right? If you, you look at a public company through 10K, it's a thousand pages and 10 different analysts looking at it. Um, if you're not disciplined in how you think through your work, you're gonna waste a bunch of time and get nowhere. And so whether you're living in Excel or living on a, on a Spartan course, I think the only way to succeed ultimately is disciplining yourself, right? And like really honing whatever tools you're gonna bring to that challenge. How do you do it? How do you, like that, that's the number one challenge everybody has. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm selling the most difficult, the only product harder to sell than what, what I sell, what we sell, yeah. is joining the Marines. <laughs> like, I mean, like it, but you know what? The Marines are the only uh, part of the Army, I, th I think, or the, the armed forces that don't have a recruiting problem. I think there's actually a, a real demand for bringing discipline into our lives because people lack it so much, and, and so much of life is so easy today, right? When you, you think about what life looks like for a lot of people, it's you wake up, you go to 9 to 5, you, you know, sit on a bus, you drink a beer, you go to sleep. Um, and so when we're wired to have these real challenges in our lives, right? we're wired for putting forks in bisons and <laughs> hunting in the, in the planes and everything, um, I think actually a lot of people lack that to a point that it's painful to have a lack of pain, right? We, we want some right level of resistance. It's a great sentence. It's painful to have a lack of pain. Yeah, yeah, and, and right? you, don't, you don't get that dopamine release of, of conquering challenges. You don't have challenges in your life anymore. And so, uh, like the Marines, like Spartan, I think creating enough challenge in your life to feel like you've accomplished something is really important. I, and ideally, those, those accomplishments are very real, right? It's, you know, you've run a mile in a better time than you've ever done before or climbed a mountain, whatever it is. Um, but finding real, authentic challenges is key. Yeah, how do we, how do, we do that? Get rid of all the synthetic shit, uh, sugar, porn, video games, whatever it is. I mean, there are all these ways that we trigger dopamine through what is fundamentally synthetic. Um, and you just gotta rip that out of your life and say, I'm starving myself of synthetic everything and everything I'm going to find pleasure in and, and happiness in is gonna be something real, right? What a great tagline for an ad, right? <laughs> Starve yourself of synthetic shit. Yeah, yeah, right? synthetic that, that would be intriguing enough that you'd say, yeah. all right, what, let me, let me look into this a little further. Yeah, no, I mean, synthetic dopamine, I think, is what unites all of these things that we feel off about. Um, in my mind, video games, porn, and sugar are kind of the three core categories of these things that we all want, right? You want to be accomplishing something, you want a beautiful person in your life, you want to eat delicious things. And all these things are synthetic ways to go get that, right? You're, you play a video game, you've conquered the world, but you're on a computer eating Cheetos, right? Like, you didn't do anything, it's, you're a loser. Um, you're watching porn, by, you know, it's disgusting. You're, you're eating sugar, you're not having nutrition, it's not, it's not nourishing your body and so um, all throughout all of our your experience especially in the you know in the West generally you're just like pummeled by synthetic dopamine experiences and if you're not really disciplined about saying I'm not gonna accept that I'm not going to allow that to cloud my my existence really you're gonna be folded because it's it's cheap but, but, and, the, but the problem is like I, we're obviously aligned yep I'm very excited about changing the world yep it's my mission yep 
but 99.9% .9 of the world is addicted to that synthetic shit. Like, like yeah, yeah. those totally. are the companies that are making the most money. Those are easy things to sell. Yeah, and I think the problem is on the other side for, for real stuff, people tend to go the middle road. And so um, from an entrepreneurial perspective, from building a business, and I have to talk about my own obviously, um, you, you can make things perfectly where when you, when you get that like real thing, when it's not synthetic, you, you can understand the difference in a, in a more tangible way. And you're actually willing to change your consumption decision from the you know, cheap polyester, sugar-filled whatever to you know, real food, real clothing, real everything. Um, but what a lot of uh, business owners have done, unfortunately, I think, is go for okay products. And so they'll add some uh, polyester, some sugar, some soy, whatever. Um, and when it's not hitting- Easier to sell. It's easier to sell, right? But the, that middle road is where, if it's already kind of adulterated by synthetic shit, you might as well just go all the way, right? And so I think what we need more of are uncompromising founders and uncompromising entrepreneurs who say, I'm gonna do this exactly right. Um, but, 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 and I'm not pushing yeah. back, because obviously we're aligned, right? Yeah. But, but the customers <clears throat> are not uncompromising. So there, when you can deliver it in the right way, there's no compromise to make, right? Um, Brunello Cuccinelli, I think, is an awesome example of this, where it's not about the brand value, it's not about throwing a logo on, it's just he makes clothing that is perfect, right? Um, the price point's not accessible to everybody, obviously, but I think for a real segment of the market, when you can provide perfect clothing, and you can put it on, you can experience it and see how you feel, how you relate to others, how that affects you, the way you show up at a party or whatever, you'll never go back to some shitty $2 t-shirt, right? Like the, once you've experienced that kind of thing, it doesn't make sense to go back to plastic. Um, you, you're doing a Spartan race, you know, video games kind of lose their appeal, right? Like it's not the same kind of dopamine from that, from that accomplishment to, you know, playing with a controller. Um, you have real food, like full, nutritious, nourishing food, you're not going back to Snickers. And so um, I think delivering- I, I, do a, I do a cucumber salad every night. It's super simple. Yeah. I could live the rest of my life on it. Yeah. I try to turn people onto it and they go back to Snickers. Like that. Because that's, uh, the other part is making it easy and making it accessible, right? So cucumber salad, it's gonna go bad in your fridge, right? Cucumbers only last so long. Uh, you have to go make it yourself, chop it up. Uh, you make it easy enough for them where somehow it's shelf stable, it's, you know, it's just there and they're choosing, you know, at the end of the day, they're going Snickers, cucumber salad, it's already available. And obviously cucumber salad doesn't lend itself well to that. Um, but like nice shelf stable products where it's perfected and it's convenient and it's just the easy default choice, they're gonna make it every time, right? So, um, so, you had some, so opening you had up an airport's a cucumber salad um, shop is probably not a good idea. Okay, maybe, it's, it can be tricky, but um, yeah, I think if, if you make uh, the default choice healthy, authentic, fundamentally good for you, people will make that choice. What are you doing now? Uh, so, reformed finance bro, uh, I, I did the whole war in private equity thing. Uh, how, I, how long? Like Not so long. So I, I was in consulting for a couple of years and private equity for a couple of years. I left as a VP at a $5 billion fund, so you know, kind of on, on the path as, as people talk about it. And um, my buddy and I built a uh, food company called Masa Chips. Uh, the, the parent company is Ancient Crunch, and the vision is to replace Frito-Lay with real food, making health the default choice when you're going for, for snacks. Um, and the, uh, the, our, our marquee product is Masa Chips, which is a tortilla chip fried in grass-fed beef tallow, grass-fed, grass-finished, you know, perfect, uh, the perfect fat for it. Um, super nutritious, very satiating, so you're gonna eat five chips and feel content, you, know, you don't need to eat. Uh, have you ever sat down for a, a football game? You have like a family bag size of Tostitos, you go through five pounds of it, you're like, what the fuck? How did, how did I eat five pounds of corn <laughs> and, and canola oil, right? Um, and the issue is those foods aren't satiating, so just you'll pound through them. And they're, they're meant to not be. They're, yeah, they're, they're really engineered by Frito-Lay, Mondelez, all these companies to not be satiating. And so um, what we wanted to develop is a food that gives you the experience you want in a and that, that full experience includes satiation, saying I've, I've had enough, right? Like this is delicious and I'm, I'm done eating. I don't, I don't need to like pound can't watch five a, pounds. Can't watch a full football game though on five chips. No, but you know, maybe it's a good thing, right? Like maybe you don't want to have, you know, if you want to enjoy a three hour game, maybe you don't want to be like stuffing your face with 4,000 calories of pure carbs. Um, and so when we're thinking about delivering the right experience, yeah, you can sell more chips if it's addictive, which is why they, they think about it this way, but I think you, you get a happier customer and ultimately a longer customer by delivering what they want, which is, I want to feel full, I want to eat an appropriate amount and, and keep moving. Does it work? People buying it? Yeah, we're sold out. So we've been sold out since about January. Oh, we're a small company, right? So we, we do everything by hand in New Jersey. We have 10 guys on payroll. It's you know very scrappy duct table, that kind of stuff. 
Um, but we've been sold out for, you know, the, it's currently this November 23. We've been sold out since January. Um, we have two new fryers landing end of month. I think we'll be sold out again pretty quickly. Nice. Um, so yeah, so far so good. I love it. And you're in there actually frying, making chips. I'm not. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, I uh, true to true to my past. I uh, sold the finance strategy side of things. So I'm CFO and um, kind of model out how we think about go to market and cash management and that kind of stuff. But um, my co-founder actually, Stephen, um, he, he's a, a big social media presence, really tan man. Um, he's in there. Uh, three, four days a week. His dad, it's a family business at this point. His dad works for, uh, with us, for us. His mom works with us. Um, and th we have uh, kind of a, 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 becoming a turnkey factory, which is nice. So, What would you recommend for folks out there that want to start their own business? They're excited about doing something. They don't want yeah. to be in the middle. They want to do something. So I've tried to start five-ish things with you know real effort. A hundred ideas, five things I thought were worth trying, one of which has succeeded. Um, I think what people fuck up on is they say it has to work and so I'm afraid to fail. And I think actually a lot of pretty good ideas can be validated for like 10K. And you know, 10K is not nothing. And so you know, if you're making 60K a year and you're saving five grand a year, I'm not, I don't want to pretend 10K is nothing, but um, you can get some family and friends, uh, some investors give you 10, 20, 30 grand, figure out how to validate a thesis, right? And validation in my mind is all about revenue. So just prove that a stranger will give you a dollar for your product at margins that work, not at scale, but today. Um, and if you can prove that, you have something. And then you just start iterating up the flywheel a little bit. So our, our first batch, um, we made 10 grand worth of inventory, right? So perfect example. We put it online at a price that worked for us from a business model perspective, and we'll bring the price down as we scale. Uh, but day one, margins worked. We had 10K worth of inventory, and strangers bought it. And for us, that was a great experiment where if it didn't work, you know, and again, you know, people have different circumstances, but it's, you know, we each lost five grand, not the end of the world. Um, and if it does work, you have, a, you have a business and you get to be an entrepreneur and be a founder, which in my mind is the coolest job in the world. Yeah. So just like find ways to fail cheaply, focus on real problems. Um, I think a lot of people drop ship garbage from China and they throw on a fancy brand and a sticker and you can make some money. I'm not saying you can't, but it's not a business. You're not, you're not creating an enterprise because you're just slapping a sticker on trash. Not building a brand. You're not building a brand. And so um, I strongly encourage, find real problems in your life, in your friends' lives. Um, find a canary uh, is, is my like, key word for it. My, my co-founders are canary, super, super sensitive. And so he was on the seed oil concept two years ago, three years ago, um, really early to it. I think if you, if you have interest in a consumer experience, find consumers that are sensitive and say, this is a really important difference that other people aren't talking about yet. And then if you are that person, find the, the right like finance structured character to go help build it. If you're a finance structured character, go find the person who's sensitive, right? That, that match works really, really well. Because you have a real problem that someone sensitive has identified and then you have the structure to go commercialize it. Love it, you're awesome. Thanks for coming. Thanks Joe, you're gonna, uh, do, the course, you're gonna do the course again? <laughs> Maybe not today, not today. You got three chips. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me on.